Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. Today's video is gonna be about the truck behind me, the 2022 Cadillac Escalade Sport Platinum. We're going to remove the current wrap with this forged carbon gloss, and we're going to replace it with that roll up there, that military green matte metallic ghost. That's gonna take a bit of time, so that'll probably be a second video follow up to this one, but what I wanted to focus on on this video is more about my methodology, some tips, some considerations, just things for you, the viewer, that you might wanna consider when you're planning your first wrap project, whether it be a panel or a whole vehicle. I think this video might come in helpful. Let's go. Every wrap project requires a clean slate. So even though we're taking this wrap off, we wanna make sure the vehicle is clean and pretty much dust and grime free. Otherwise, we're going to risk extra contamination on the body panels or in the crevices when we go to put the new wrap on. So we might as well do ourselves a favor and clean this vehicle really well before we even peel off the old wrap. So I'm gonna do that quick, enjoy. Okay, she's pretty clean. It's not a perfect wash job because you probably saw I just used one bucket, just some soap, rinsed it off. That's because I'm not worried about any swirl marks on the wrap. It's self healing anyway, but I'm not worried about the swirl marks because we're taking it off. So why go through the extra effort? So she's pretty clean, but we also need to make sure that our workspace is clean. So if you live in Canada, you'll get a lot of this. So we'll move the vehicles out, we'll give it a sweep and then we'll pull the Escalade back in and we'll start unwrapping it. So I recommend a heat gun because you want to soften the material so the adhesive stays stuck to the material. It comes off in larger sheets. It's less likely to crack and tear. Some of that's still gonna happen. It's not a big deal. Remember, we got PPF under here. That's why these lines exist. I'm going to put this GoPro on my head and give you a first person view of taking this old wrap off. Okay, so the first thing we gotta be cautious of is not to peel off the PPF off of the front of the vehicle, if we can help it. If we do, not a huge deal, it can be replaced, but I'd prefer to preserve it. Now, because my vinyl was wrapped around the edges, and this is just a little bit of residue, you can see it wipes right off there, no scratches, trust me. The PPF wraps around and so does the vinyl. So we have to be very careful how we take the vinyl off, otherwise we could end up peeling the PPF 
off, which started to happen on the hood because they put so much excessive PPF wrapped around here and it wasn't stuck down very tight. So now what we need to do is trim off the excess material from the PPF here. And then we'll take the new vinyl and it'll wrap it a little further and that should be okay. The main thing is, is this PPF line here is still intact, so it's not gonna lift. And we wanna make sure that we do that here. This is PPF, so I'm gonna be spending a lot more time up in this front area, taking my time. Everything else should go a lot quicker. Now you may wonder why I would intentionally split the vinyl right here. It's because it's gonna be easier to pull this piece off together so I can pull out the area that's tucked underneath. And then same with here, I got less vinyl to work with to pull everything forward. So that's why you might wanna split it like this. Instead of trying to do one big sheet, you're just gonna be fighting against the vinyl. So this is easier. Okay, I think it's coming along nicely. We have the PPF intact all on the front. We have a little blemish there, but we should be able to wrap over that and everything will be fine. We got this front piece taken off here just so we could pull the wrap out. If I didn't do such a good job with the first wrap, this one would be a lot easier to take off, but all of my edges are tucked in under trim. The handles have to come off so the vinyl goes behind that. I have to take the mirrors off. So again, we're just gonna peel off as much as we can get most of the truck done. I'm not gonna film all of it because I think you guys get the point by now. You'll see little specks here and there. That's just, you know, a little bit of adhesive that maybe got left behind. It'll all just wipe off, I'm not worried. But you can see the paint is protected. It's pretty much new because the last wrap, this one that we're taking off, we put it on when the truck was less than 30 days old. So it's in really, really new condition, which is only gonna make the next wrap even easier and the results should be better. You might've seen in some of the footage that we had some residue in these crevices in the hood. That's just glue from the vinyl that was sticking better to the paint than it was to the vinyl itself. A Little bit of goo gone, got that off, not a problem with the microfiber towel. There's a lot of just fingerprints and stuff. We're gonna have to do a proper cleaning of every surface before we go and wrap it. I just wanna let you know that when you run into a little bit of glue left over from an old wrap, Goo Gone works pretty good. Now what I like to do for some of the emblems is I'll put several layers of tape that makes the shape of the piece right here so I don't have to worry about measuring or anything like that. And then I will mark where all the letters line up, what it says. And then I'll do the same for the Escalade badge over there. I'll just put it over here for safekeeping. And that's that body line right there. No problem. All right, we got the BMW pulled back in. The Escalade is pretty much unwrapped. We still got vinyl behind the mud flaps, behind the handles, behind some of this trim, the mirror. But that's what I told you we were gonna do. But I'm gonna call it a night. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about how to plan for a wrap, how I would plan to wrap this vehicle, how much material I would need, considerations that you might need to make when wrapping your own vehicle. So I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, the Escalade is still in the garage. I've started picking away at the door a little bit, but I'll explain why, because this next part is about assessing your project for a wrap. So when you have a project to wrap, you need to really understand how the vehicle is put together, what weather stripping can come off, what trim can come off, body molding, badges, you name it. So let's have a close look at the door. So I needed to take off the weather stripping here 
because I want the material to wrap underneath like the previous wrap. To do that, there's two screws here. When we open this up, we can see that there's a screw hole that is under here, and there's one on this side behind this weather stripping. But I need to take the door panel off so I could get the door handle off. Door panel wasn't too bad, it was four screws, and then you have to undo the door cable for the handle, a couple harnesses, some wiring for the handle because it's illuminated, and then you're able to get your vinyl nicely laid in here, one piece, but then we have this body molding here that's put on with a large piece of adhesive. I opt not to remove this because then I'm gonna have to replace that adhesive. There's just a little bit of paint work underneath here. I'm confident I can put one sheet of vinyl, lay it in here, and then trim it so it'll fit nicely and we'll be able to get one piece. We've also got to wrap a little bit around the corners. The good news is this is a black truck, so we only have to go a little bit around the corners. We don't have to worry too much about the door jams because there's a natural line here when the door is closed. I have a rag in there so it won't close all the way, so I don't want to get locked out. But if you look at this, we have our door jam here. We close this door. We have a nice black line. When the green vinyl we're putting on goes to here and the green vinyl goes to there, it's just gonna look like a shadow. And because it's black in behind, it'll just continue to look like a shadow. If this was white in here, then we would have to be worried about wrapping the vinyl a little further to mask that other color. Because in this case, we just want black and green to show. So that is the benefit of a black vehicle. They have to be the easiest to wrap, bar none. Also, you wanna look at other areas for removing trim. So in this case, we had this plate right here. Look how dusty that gets just from the last time we wrapped it. This was so easy to remove. It's just pressure fit in, popped it up, took it off. But every vehicle is different. Our Escalade before this one, it used screws from underneath the bumper. So it was not something that was easily removable. So the point here is just understand what you're getting into. Mud flaps, we have to take off all those screws, pull this down so we can get the material in behind the mud flap. I'm not a big fan of wrapping mud flaps because right here, it doesn't have a nice clean edge. That's just gonna get beat up and I think it's gonna look crappy. So we're gonna leave this black as it is now. So that's my guidance for assessing your wrap project and it's gonna lead right into measuring the right amount of material to get started. So you wanna measure for your wrap. Well, every roll of wrap is 60 inches tall or 60 inches wide, depending on how you look at it. When you look on the back, there's usually wording and that helps you understand the orientation. Why is that important? Because some wraps, the material is directional. So if we look at the Escalade here, if I have to wrap everything below the windows and these trim pieces, this is easily under the five foot mark or 60 inches. So I could start a roll back here and I could unroll it all the way along and use one big piece here. And then it just needs to be cut for the sections or does it? Because we have the door right here where if we decide to wrap all the way up here, well now I'm getting close to that five feet, probably more. And I need to take that into account when I'm planning how I'm gonna use my material. Now, not all wraps are directional. The one I'm using isn't. So if I have to lay some this way or that way, it's not gonna make a difference. That can really come into play when you have a large hood. Most hoods are pretty big. Some are even too big for one roll of wrap. You actually have to find somewhere to put a seam. Some people might put a couple seams on the side just to get the right uh, distance across. So before you pull the trigger on ordering wrap film, understand your vehicle and how that wrap is gonna to have to be unrolled to cover it. In case it's directional, you wanna be very careful, especially if it has a pattern, that could be problematic. Some vinyls, they have a pattern that is random and that usually works best, but some have a pattern that goes a certain direction. Say you had a, a fake carbon fiber, that's gonna lay a certain way. Now you gotta think of that all ahead of time, draw yourself a picture, plan it out. Just put the planning in first before you order your film. Okay, you might be asking yourself, how do we measure to get the right amount of material? Let me show you my process for the Escalade here. So I put some orange tape on a few panels just to keep track of the math so you don't blame me if you order the wrong amount of material. So pretty easy process. First thing you wanna do is measure the length of your vehicle 
I used a tape measure. This vehicle is 16 feet long, but we have brakes based on the body panel. So we have this fender, door, door, and another fender. So this is the side. You probably need about a foot of extra material. You might need more if you're just beginning, but 16 feet plus a foot for every brake is going to equal 20 feet. So for this side, we have 20 feet and the other side, 20 feet, that is 40 feet. When we come around to the back, our bumper actually wraps around. So I've already measured, it is under 12 feet, but we want a little extra material. So we're gonna say this is 12 feet because it's about two and a half feet there, two and a half there, a little under five here, round it up, extra film, 12 feet. This piece here, it's probably gonna be another six. That's with a little extra film. And that's gonna cover the back. We'll probably have a little left over to be able to cover this valence. The 20 feet should cover all the side. This door is just about five feet tall. And because the window's not getting wrapped, we can move the vinyl and work with it to get this little piece up here. So we're still good with a 60 inch roll to make that one piece. The hood is gonna be another seven. The roll has to go across this way. So that's where directional film can be important because if it all had to go this way with this turned, it can kind of look funny when the light hits it. It looks like the vinyl doesn't match. It looks like it's from different stock, but no, it's just because it was directional vinyl. So just keep that in mind. Plus another 11 for the front bumper. And then if you're gonna do your roof, this is tens. But on this wrap, unlike the other one, I'm not going to do from here up. I didn't do the roof on the last one because this was all black and there's a huge sunroof on top there that takes up most of the roof anyway but I'm gonna give it that kind of tuxedo look, kind of like a Land Rover. It's just going to join up here. I'll do a cut and it'll look good. It'll look like my AT4 does right now. So you need over 80 feet to do this whole vehicle. I don't need quite that much. I'm probably more around this 65, 70, um, just based on my skill set. But I hope that helps you just try to understand how you can plan for your wrap. Think of it panel by panel. Now you need to consider your workspace. So for this wrap, I'm pretty much gonna have access to both bays here. Normally my car would sit here and the Escalade would sit there. You might not always have that luxury. It is getting colder outside here in Canada. So the car is probably gonna be in here at times when I'm working on the truck. So I used to, especially in the warmer months, dedicate all of this space, put the vehicle in the middle and then begin the wrap. And then I would take apart everything I need to take apart because I could set aside all those trim pieces all around the garage and then put it all back together when I'm done. But that isn't always a luxury that you have. So what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm going to do one panel at a time. So I'll strip everything I need off of this door. I'll make sure that I have like a rag in here so I can't lock myself out. I'll wrap this door perfectly. I'll put it all back together and then I'll move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. Now, I already have enough practice to know what panels I'm comfortable starting with. If you're a novice, just beginning, I recommend starting with a fender. Do that first, get used to the material that you're using before you try other panels. So you're gonna need some tools to do your wrap. You're not gonna need everything that I show you here, but I will walk you through a number of the things that I have laid out on the table and explain where they come in handy. So in no particular order, you're going to need squeegees. They do have different flexibility. That's where the colors come in. And then you wanna make sure you have extra felts to replace them as they get worn out. This would be a good example of a worn out felt. I wouldn't use this, it'd probably scratch the wrap. Sometimes you can get other little squeegees that come in handy. You just come across them. These are felt squeegees. I just kind of hoard everything in case I need it for a specific application. You're definitely gonna need knives. These ones I like to use when cutting off of the roll. All of these I like to use while I'm working on the panels themselves. We have a number of different squeegees here. These are for tucking the vinyl around corners or in areas you just can't get at with a larger squeegee or your fingers. So these come in handy and the colors usually represent different flexibility. We have isopropyl alcohol and lots of rags. I'll use more rags than that but 70% is usually the right mix to clean all your panels so they look as good as that one right there. You're gonna need wrap gloves because you're gonna to wanna to work in the film and the oils on your hands can sometimes get in the way of that. And you gotta be careful of touching the back of the wrap. You wanna try not to touch the back of the material anywhere where it's gonna make contact with the body. 
That's why you always have extra material to grab onto. We have knifeless tape, so this is gonna help us cut the vinyl better than a knife might be able to in certain applications. We have Goo Gone. In this case, I needed it for old residue that might be left behind by the wrap. You can you know, see a little bit right there, for example. That'll just come right off, probably just with isopropyl alcohol, but Goo Gone is a nice next step. You don't need this, but you have an infrared thermometer. This can come in handy for post heating. Once we have the wrap laid down, we gotta heat it all and press it in to activate the adhesive. This can come in handy to tell you if you're achieving the right temperature. We have this uh, wheel here that attaches to your drill. This is to help get adhesive off of the body, especially from taking off emblems. We have lots of different double-sided tape here because we're gonna need to reattach our emblems that we removed with new adhesive. We have our tape measure. This is always handy having a measuring tape that's flexible. We have tape that we're going to need to use where we don't want the vinyl to stick. So I'll be putting tape along here. I'll be putting tape along here, on this side here, on the bottom, because I don't want the wrap to stick in these areas. I gotta be able to grab it and stretch and wrap doesn't stick very well to tape. We have our heat gun. Make sure that your heat gun has adjustable heat settings. I always use mine right in the middle. Uh, the low setting is too low and the high setting will melt the film pretty quickly. So you just want to be careful of the heat gun that you're using and understand the distance you can use to work with it. We have various screwdrivers. I pulled these ones out on purpose because a pick tool, super handy when you're taking off trim and harnesses and things like that where your fingers can't grab. A vehicle like this uses uh, Torx screws. So Torx screwdrivers come in handy. Little flat screwdrivers fine, and then you'll probably need some other screwdrivers depending on your vehicle. We have panel removal tools here, a bunch of different ones, metal ones, just to help with some of those pressed in plugs that sometimes you can't get with your fingers. Flashlight, we have a drill. Also, we can't forget magnets because they will help you hold things to the panel while you work with it. You might need a few more tools, but this is a pretty comprehensive list. You don't need all of this, but I'm probably gonna use something from each category to get this wrap done to my satisfaction. Well, there we have it. We unwrapped the Escalade. I showed you tips and tricks along the way, just considerations when you're taking off a wrap and when you're planning for that new wrap. So from measuring the right amount of vinyl to order, from making sure you have the right tools, I think we did a pretty good overview of just getting your head ready to get in the big game of wrapping. So my head is already in the game to wrap this vehicle the new color. That's gonna be the next video. Definitely hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss that video. Hit that like button because I know you like this video and we'll talk to you guys soon.